Hello. Episode 524. How are you? 524. Back for more. Nah. I had to. It was so fun. I'm doing well. Got a little bit of a throat tickle, so I feel like I have like one of those yeah. sexy truck driver voices. <laughs> right. Yes. yes. If you could think of a sexy truck driver. I mean, I've always been Bixie, envious that would be it. of your, you know, rich... And robust. Deep voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It gets a little deeper when I got a little bit of a, a throat tickle. So, yeah. There Who's the lady? I always forget her name. The actress that played Chandler's mom. Yes. Dad. Oh my God. I do. I do sound like her. You think I had, like, I'm not, like, I, I didn't smoke cigarettes for years. She probably did, though. Yeah. It was his mom. She was trans, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but Kathleen not in Turner. Real life, right? Right. No, it's right. Kathleen Turner, and she's not trans in real life. Right. But okay, yeah, that's she yes. always has that type of voice, and yeah. it always raspy. reminds me of you. Yeah, raspy. Well, I like it. Too. Raspy, also raspy. Excellent word for the sound that it is. <laughs> like like an onomatopoeia. Love that. Yep. Yeah. And, and fair for people who have raspy voices, that totally works. I like it. They like you say it, and it also kind of sounds like that. The one that I really feel like they were doing these guys a real like disservice with this lisp <laughs> how unfair is that yeah that's cruel cruel yeah you're gonna name the condition yeah. something that people who have it can't pronounce that's fucked up yeah they should have called it lick or something oh my god you know what Susie. I, mean? I you know what 500 and f- how many episodes i'm glad we're finally getting to this because this is one this is something that <laughs> finally I, like you've been yeah, waiting no really i feel like 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 i feel like this is something that i've discussed like i've brought up many At, times like, cocktail in, parties yes yeah and like like you know like you have Parlor those talk. ideas yes exactly <laughs> and it, fall it falls into there along with well right. now i don't share this anymore but i used to share it all the time my favorite inventions that i think would be uh, uh, really successful. Yeah. I don't share that anymore. Wait, ever why? Ever since my... Well, because uh, what's-his-name stole my children's <laughs> book idea. <laughs> you think these inventions are so good someone might Absolutely, steal them? Absolutely, Susie. <laughs> and if you heard them, and one of them already got invented. So <laughs> there you go. Wait, what's the one that already got invented? You know what? I'm going to tell you, and then they're they bleep it out. <laughs> oh. Can we do that? I guess. Okay, here we go. Graduated brake lights. I don't, you, even, I don't even you, know what that means. When you step on them, they get like you see how hard somebody pushes on the brake in front of you, so you know how hard. Like if it's just a little brake, it's just a, like one light. If you push really hard, it's like all four lights light, light up. I'm definitely not believing it. Oh my god! You're well. I guess you can because they already made it. But wait, yeah. they did. Yes. Who did? <laughs> I don't know. Whoever they like, somebody who some car people like. So you, you like, feel like brakes should? I do feel that way about horns. Like I want a mean horn, yeah. a honk, and I want a nice honk. Like hey, yeah, just like me me. Yeah, okay, all that's right. what it would sound like. I versus, see. Ah. I see. It'd be like Susie's voice and Sarah's voice yeah. telling you <laughs> right now. Yeah, that's so fucking funny. I yes, see. Susie'd be like, um, excuse me, pardon me. me, and I'd be like, hey, move it. Scram! Stop it! <laughs> Scram! Beat it! Oh ah, God! I'm done. Oh God! My <coughs> stomach already hurts. Oh God! That Wait, is so funny. Wait, I gotta funny. write this down. Sarah's and oh God, you're you are making already. me giggle, and my cheeks <laughs> already hurt, and I, I can't even get so myself together. I think it's so funny that you have like a list of inventions that you don't want to share anymore, but you also aren't going to invent. <laughs> well, <laughs> one of them I think I actually might invent. In fact, mm. oh my god, who? I had an ex I talked I can't remember which ex it was, but that was like I'm all in and that really? was like this week yes that said this is pitchable to Shark Tank because it yes. Does and is I, it uh, usually that people poo-poo your ideas? Um no, people don't poo-poo them. Oh, okay. People are like, "Holy shit, that's a really good idea. Yeah. You should make that." But this yeah. person was like ready to invest in the company. It's not a company. This one is an item. It's a already. I'm making an item that already exists better. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're improving so, something. Okay. I'm improving something, which you know, women are so good at. Yes, that's true. 
You know, I mean, half I feel the like- stories we tell on this show about like where something was invented or how, it's usually like the wife of the person that got credit for it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, that's actually a pretty good segue into one of the first things I want to share with you, which is a fantastic documentary movie sort of thing that I, well, yeah, that I watched, uh, that I think you've watched too, called The Biggest Little Farm. Yes. Oh my God, Susie. I loved this. It was a great film. That one's on Amazon, I think. Yes. on And you know what? I think it I think it might even be on Hulu now, too. Okay. Maybe. You can find it somewhere. What did you like or about it? Or maybe on Netflix. Everything. <laughs> um, so, first of all, talking about, like, women inspiring ideas. This is about... Uh, so, it's a husband and wife, and they lived in L.A., and they had a... Well, I don't even want to, like, ruin, spoil it, but n- twists and turns uh, take them out and like, life uh, situations... Uh, push them to decide that they want to um, open up or run their own farm, that the Mm -hmm. best life for them, the life that they really want would be a life that I totally agree with, living on a farm. Mm -hmm. And she is, uh, he's a filmmaker, he's a DP in the film industry and does like documentary filmmaking and uh, uh, nature documentaries. And um, she is a private chef. And so she, like, really cares about where ingredients come from. Mm -hmm. And she said she really wanted a farm that had all of the ingredients that she would be able to use for cooking and was really, like, diverse. And and she, you know, they, like, did a bunch of research and met with people who were specialists in, in, you know, creating, like, a, a, uh, what would you call it? Like, a like farm utopia like how farming should be like going back to the basics which is a a harmonious system Mm -hmm. that is almost self-sufficient once you get it running like uh Mm -hmm. you know a cycle of life kind of thing and like you know the 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 whole like like instead of fighting against nature to create what you want you work with nature to make something awesome yes yeah here's some of my favorite parts okay (laughs) This place, the farm, is about five miles from my house. No. Yes. It's Aww. in my backyard. I'm totally going to go visit. And they have uh, 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 today. Well, I'm not going to be able to go today because I'm not feeling well. But next week, um, the farmer's market every single Thursday here in my town. And I'm going to get food from them. Oh, my gosh. That is adorable. I- it's the most adorable thing ever. So they started this farm. It's 200 acres. It's in Moore Park, California. It is, they have, I believe, 75 different types of stone fruit alone. Wow. How Those many? are like April, 75 different Jesus, varietals. Jesus, I didn't even know that was that many. Just, period. Right? Like different kinds of apricots, different kinds, everything. And you just want, like, it is uh, uh, an emotional roller coaster. It's like laughs. It's it's heartwarming. <laughs> it's like stories of love and friendship and life and death. Also, it taught me, Susie. <clears throat> uh, there's a lot of death on a farm. That is for sure. It really made me think. Like I'm and and don't you feel like she kind of pawned that off onto her husband? <laughs> <laughs> Which I support thoroughly. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. But I mean, I think it's good to be exposed to some of that because we do purposefully distance ourselves from the realities of like, you know, meat or, (coughs) you know, food in general and what it takes to get it on your plate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. And uh, uh, yeah, it is really important. I think even in watching that, I felt much better about, well, not much, but but like good about my choice to have a more plant-based diet recently. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, that feels like, you know, the right thing to do. And it just makes you love. I got so inspired to like eat fruits and vegetables after watching that movie too. Mm-hmm. I know that sounds silly, but like you just see how beautiful it is and just the whole process and how everything works together. And so many cool things like, you know, just what's wrong with farming right now? How we've just ta- we've stripped everything down and 
ruined the topsoil and how we've taken away all the nutrients. Like, I don't understand why they keep back. doing that. I don't either, Susie. Like because this- it takes too much work. It take you have to do it at a small scale. You can't do things at a big. You can't do it at a big scale. Yeah, right. Everything has to go back to a more, like a smaller. The best was when all the bees came. So it was real funny. This is one of my favorite parts. When they first move, they first get the farm. The farm looks <clears throat> like 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 a dust ta- like a dust bowl. Like it looks like like a ghost town so terrible and they have a beekeeper come and he's like looking at you know because you gotta like <laughs> bees are very important so he's like looking at the the what do you call those things beehives the mm-hmm. those little boxes where they live mm-hmm. the hives and he was like uh oh man like this is bad like they're all dead there's like no life here and then i think it was something like seven months later or not even that long later after they got everything kind of running and as soon as the plants came and as soon as like uh uh the ground crop like what do they call that ground crops or ground cover Mm -hmm. crops came yeah the bees showed up in swarms and the beekeeper uh, comes again and he's like well isn't this a night and day difference i can tell you the bees like it and if the bees like it it's a good thing and i like got goosebumps all over i was like this is the best and i was like i want to put bee friendly things in front of my house so maybe some of the bees from apricot farms could come to my house yes. too. Adam it's and i so watch um, gardener's world every morning while we <gasps> breakfast and what's gardener's world it's a british gardening show oh, it, it is well, so let great. me make note of that yeah it is so soothing and awesome and you learn so much like about what plants attract bees and and how to make sure like even birds you should encourage birds to your space you know all that stuff you got to like put in your your effort too they're doing all the work so like you gotta lend a hand yes (laughs) and we need to like just like sit back and let them do their jobs yeah man don't stop getting in the way it is. It was. It's the cutest thing. When I don't even want to spoil it, you guys. I'm not kidding. You need to see this movie. This is like. An, this is like visual antidepressants. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yes, thank you. And uh, uh, when you see some of the adorable ways that certain animals take care of the problem of other animals. Oh yeah, like the ducks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like the animal I can't even believe it. It's a real oh, symphony. it's so stinking cute. Oh, God. My heart just goes pitter-patter. And I just feel like I live amongst nature now, and it feels so nice. And it's, like, so fun to be, um, uh, you know, out in nature and then reading our book club pick, which is the overstory that I picked this month. If you guys don't uh, know about our book club or, like, you know, haven't heard about it or aren't a member – you need to definitely uh, join us because, first of all, sliding scale, free, like, join whatever price you want. And, like, it's, like, laugh and learn and so much fun. And so yeah, my book club pick, I'm just so obsessed with it already. And it's, like, all about trees. So it's, like, great. Nature everywhere. Well, and another thing that's great, if I dare say, is the lovely service of Noom. And yes. we, in fact, in book club, so many of the members are also in Noom. And yep. it is they've like created great- their own group of like support group of it's amazing. I love it. Yeah, like our book club is like a community, and truly, I mean that's what Noom is trying to do too. Yes. Where it's like they're going to give you the tools to make your life better, to hold you accountable with your habits, can help you shop for food or better understand your cravings, and not seeing mm-hmm. food as like a bad, you know, certain foods as bad or sinful. And it's such a great app if you want – well, we've been talking a lot about power, the power of habits and that's sort yes. of the essence of what Noom is doing is trying to give you cognitive behavioral approach to changing your habits and making your life improve. We love science when it works for us. Start building better habits for healthier long-term results. Sign up for your trial at Noom.com slash Brain Candy. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash Brain Candy. Change your mindset. I love it. Yes. I know how many people on here love learning. And that is, you learn so much. I'm impressed with how much I'm learning on there. Yeah. I'm like, you know, here I am over here like, I know everything. 
Actually, well, sometimes it's good for reminders too. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, okay. We talked about big, uh, biggest little farm. You definitely have to uh, see that. Um, okay. So speaking of learning and things that maybe we need to learn a little bit more about. Oh my gosh, I read uh, the mo- uh, like the most shocking and depressing article. Mm. Uh, a study was done in the UK. A survey or like a, a was conducted for women who were uh, uh, already going to the doctor and, and getting healthcare stuff done. So they're people who are like seeking medical services. Um, and they asked them a very simple question. How many holes does a woman have in their general area? <laughs> okay. What percentage of people do you think answered that correctly? God. Susie, get Tell ready. me. Guess. I want you to guess. I mean, this is I would so have crazy. normally have guessed, yeah. I don't know, 70%. Try 46. Oh. How Only many do they think we have? 46. Um, I think most people thought two. Okay. They, yeah. So they were, yeah, people were asked to answer two parts. They were simply asked how many holes does a woman have in their private parts. And second, they were shown a diagram with seven annotated structures. And then they were asked, asked whoa, I don't know what happened there, asked to label uh, as many of them as they could. And they were also allowed to use like layperson's language, like, you know, pee hole and bum hole. And those were acceptable answers. Okay. And only 46% correctly identify the women have three holes um yeah well okay what do you have the word the exact wording of the question like did they call it the private area or how many holes does a woman have in her private parts okay well do you think like they didn't know that the butt was included Mm. you know what i mean they said that the Mentioned holes were vagina, <laughs> oh, right, anus, they had to and urethra. Yeah. Okay. That 67% mentioned the vagina, which is like, what are the other ones mentioning? <laughs> All right. Then 55% anus and 35% urethra. Oh. Yep. And the structures that were most identified correctly were the vagina, oh, 71%. Identified that correctly. Anus, sixty-seven percent. Sixty-seven only. I know what is going on. I, Sus. I can't, this seems insane. But the the other part is the biggest confusion came from the urethra and the clitoris. Of wait. oh my god! Right. <laughs> wait, wait. What did they think? Oh my god. Of okay, so seventy-three percent of people labeled the clitoris. And sixty three percent labeled it correctly, while nine percent labeled it as the urethra. Oh, of the fifty one percent of oh the God. people who labeled the urethra, fifty one percent labeled it correctly, and the other forty nine percent labeled it as the clitoris. So people are very confused oh, about wow. which is which. Yeah, I mean to be fair, it is a confusing area. I think. It is. And you know what? It's like unless you've seen it yeah. <laughs> and felt it, yes. you would be like, mm, eh, you know, yeah. it comes out of wherever. Well, yeah. so do you think that a lot of these people just have never seen one? I think a lot of these – well, they said that – the article said that the biggest uh, uh, factor in this was education and age and that Aww. the people who scored the highest – and this is in the UK too, mm-hmm. uh, but I would imagine it would be similar – that the people who scored the highest or did the best were educated uh, older white people and the people who did the worst were people of color who were lower income mm-hmm. and younger. And Aww. so this really shows that we need education in – schools about this about bot your freaking body parts yeah but okay oh yeah i just thought even if you were uneducated you'd know a butthole i mean that's i think maybe standard i don't know i mean that makes me sad for them it makes right and you know one of the one of the parts that i couldn't even believe uh, only 9% of people were able to identify all of them and label all of them. Wow. 
I can confidently say I could label all of them and identify all of them. Yeah. I would, well, I, I don't, you wouldn't I've even need to. I've looked it up many times because I do find it fascinating to know like the proper yeah. names of that area. Yeah. But I guess if you didn't look it up and. Yeah. It didn't take a mirror to your own maybe. Oh my God. The that other part depressing. that was, so a few more shocking things in this study. Not much of a difference between men and women in their ability to label the structures, I which shows that. that we're failing on all on, on educating everyone. However, the women were more likely to a, uh, label the anus and vagina than their male counterparts. Oh, thank God! So when they're like, "Oops, sorry, I didn't know." Maybe they actually don't know who women. Oh, men. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Also. Dang. Uh, the there was a common misperception that the cervix was an external genital hole. Stop. Yeah. We're really what? failing in the teaching of women's body parts. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Who do you think should I be saw, doing yeah. that? Schools. Yeah. I don't you know. I thought to. maybe pediatricians maybe could lend a hand too. Oh my God. Excellent point. Yes. You know what? That should be like part, you know how like, well, no, it's like kind of like you have to have a driver's test to that. But I feel like, yeah, there should be like a, it should be part of your, I think that we should have the right to know what's going on in, well, like we go into the doctor and we're just like, let me take off my clothes. Go ahead. Feel my stomach. And then they should like be actively explaining what they're Absolutely. doing as they do it. Oh my God. That's a thing. Yeah. Because I we, would say parents sure. should do it, too, but please. we can't depend on them. And also don't – right. Let's, let's put it in the hands of the people who have the education. Hello. Oh, my God. Suze, <laughs> you, this is – I'd like to put this on the list of inventions. Well, <laughs> another thing well, like – I'll when, credit you. <clears throat> when you do take your kid to the pediatrician, at least to our pediatrician, they do say that thing of like nobody should touch your privates except, you know, you, you – your pediatrician or your right. parents but like i feel like they also need to mention like and it should be like there should be a good reason because <laughs> you know yes. parents as you know sometimes a hundred percent yeah and yes. even pediatricians yes my sister Absolutely. says she was felt up by her pediatrician oh my gosh it doesn't surprise me yeah so oh, like God, i don't know that so just sad. seems like a little bit of a broad stroke Absolutely. No, I think those kind of things should be taught. There's actually a law called Aaron's Law that's in place in California. And I, I, I more than half of the states, last time I checked, um, that uh, says that uh, age-appropriate sexual uh, assault awareness or sec- like uh, safe touch and unsafe touch is mandatory to teach in schools, yet that's not enforced anywhere. And they don't know how to enforce it. Wait. A hundred percent true. I used to speak at, at with the woman who started it, named Erin Marin, and we went and spoke in the. I spoke at the city of Long to the um, uh, uh, city council, talking about the importance of this program and the need for changes in the schools to enforce it yeah. and to create a pro an actual curriculum and a program around it, and that it's age appropriate and you know, it's like people don't know how to create this or enforce it, so so they just don't do it. So they just don't do it. But One the law thing is there. Everybody should do is get a therapist and yes, please. You know, share your feelings and concerns with a licensed professional, and now you can from the comfort oh, of so your important. own home yes. with the help of Better Help. They have counselors who can help you with depression or anxiety, um, trauma, anger. Anything that you are struggling with, they have someone who can help you. They have financial aid available. The service is available worldwide, and you can talk to the counselors from your phone or your laptop. Um, So it's super convenient and less intimidating maybe than going into an office. And we want you to start living a happier life today. And as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash brain candy. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, dot com slash brain candy. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love talking to a therapist. Do you? Yeah. I do not love it. What? No, I do not love it. But I think it's good. Maybe it's kind of like going to the gym. Yes. Afterwards, you're like, oh, yes. You never regret it. That's true. 
Yeah. yeah. Just going to the gym. But like, isn't it before weird? Before that- each appointment, yeah. I'm like, I'm going to cancel. <laughs> oh, everybody. That is that pre session anxiety. Yeah. Oh my God. In fact, like, I'll sometimes think of like, I'll always be like one minute late because like, <laughs> I'm like, mm. Do really? I really want to start? Yeah, that's totally a thing. Like, like for my own, so not my cl- with my clients. Obviously, this is my own. No, no, no. That yeah, I'm yeah. talking about. That's yes. funny. So, with my own clients, I'm like, let's do this. I love it. <laughs> it's the best. Um, but yeah, the, everybody experiences that. Everybody ha- like that. That oh my god, what? And then that fear of like, what am I going to talk about this week? I don't have anything. And those are the best weeks because I say, when the sun is shining, fix the roof. Well, then what do you do? You say like, so we're going to talk about what? Uh, it depends. Depends on who the person is. But, um, <clears throat> you know, maybe recognizing what was different. If it was a good week, like what's different this week as compared mm-hmm. to those other weeks? Mm-hmm. And then I like to, I think it's so important to, like I'm saying this, like I invented this. This is like neuroscience and like, you know, we're just like working with your brain here. That we so often uh, play back and like re rewind the tape and review the, the footage of anxious moments and depressed moments and sad moments and things that are uncomfortable feelings and, um, things that we really don't want to be thinking about. And we like, and, um, there's a saying in neuroscience or saying yeah, if it fires together, it wires together. Mm-hmm. So the more you activate and fire those memories together, the more connection you make between those things and the more you like you know embed that that map in your brain Mm -hmm. and we do not spend an equal amount of time on the positive stuff we really never say oh yeah you're feeling like happy and joy like what was that like where's Mm -hmm. that what do you where do you feel like that let's talk about that what makes you happy what's you know we only you know talk about the other stuff or not even talk about but like play it back in our head as like this way of like um, we're trying to, to, and it's our brain just wanting to be safe. And so it, it goes, Oh gosh, don't do this. And then in, next time, like do this instead. And so it's doing all those things, but really we need to tell it to just like chill and enjoy the moment and remember what these good feelings feel like. Cause then it'll just start doing those. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Oh, more of those it's, things. For sure. It really is just like that. You just have to like start recognize it's like that stop and smell the roses kind of thing you know Mm -hmm. the more the more you change what you look at the more you will start to see the things that you want to look at yeah yeah i just you know a little bit let's pretend like you did invent it though yeah yeah you know i'm gonna go ahead and take credit for it but i'm sure i come up with an amazing good metaphor that like is wonderful in some therapy session and you know all that um okay let's see what else do i want to talk to you about oh god this is terrifying oh i don't know if i should even share this because i feel like i might is it that dumb glass pool nope that glass pool is a a a AWH. Mirror that is. Pu- a mirror puddle compared no, to what this what? is. No, what? What? Okay. This is a real thing that actually happened. Okay. In China, a girl was riding in an elevator. Oh, no. And she got stuck on the first floor. And she, like, there was something going on and she couldn't get the door open. And so workers came and they pried the door open. And as they did, they noticed that the elevator started to slowly shift up Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it shot up like a rocket no 30 floors no and she died on (gasps) it sarah she died she died wait a minute why in the world would a malfunction like that happen there the oh my god isn't this isn't that fucking terrifying yeah because you can understand intellectually how it would fall 30 feet, like if the cable breaks or something. How the well, hell does it suddenly get a rocket engine? So the crazy thing is that there's this idea that we should be worried about the elevator falling. Yeah. But it's much more likely that the elevator would hit the top floor. 
Why? Because what happens is the well and what happened in this situation first of all rest assured like this won't happen here and you're okay because <laughs> th- they did go back and they 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 didn't do a brake inspection recently they hadn't done an an inspection on like the braking system uh mm. and the braking force and then the brake release gap whatever the fuck that is i don't know i don't operate <laughs> elevators um but what happened here is the brake lever snapped in two, and then the counterbalance shot down the elevator okay. shaft, and the counterbalance is so heavy yes, that caused it that. to go flying. Basically, there was nothing resisting yeah, it. Yep. So the weight of the counterbalance, they should put a fucking emergency brake on that shit. Can you imagine? <laughs> and it took them like hours to like pr- get her out of there. That is hell, man. I know. Wonder That's what was like, making I'll it stuck. I'll take a glass pool any day over. Why do you think elevators? it was stuck on the first floor? Like, oh my god, that makes me so scared. <sighs> mm. Um, I don't know. I don't. Know, but the safety inspection that they did didn't have any strength and safety testing of the elevator brake rods. Um, you know, that's what they said. Good so. lord. Yep, and they. I guess they like the brakes were believed in the industry to be able to withstand huge amounts of force, but. They they were wrong about that. Didn't test it in the way that they should. So and they like people who looked said they've never encountered this. It was like a freak accident that that's never happened. Thing, so like, don't worry. That's the thing. This is so <coughs> rare that this is big yeah. news, and right. that's a good thing. Good thing, right? You have to think about how many. It's kind of like when they say like the. Uh, airplanes that crash make the news, but think yeah. about how many take off and land every single day. Yeah. And there's some comedian there who said, I can't remember who it is, but it's such a good joke and like true, um, that we should really just start applauding. Maybe it was in something I saw at like church, but we should start applauding when, <laughs> and when planes land and, and take off. Because if we just switch the news to be like, good day. Five million planes, like like five thousand planes landed and took off safely, and like let's give it up for you know Southwest. For Somebody put no up, accidents. Woo. I don't know if it was a meme or what, but it was just saying that the Wright brothers and yeah. the moon landing were only like fifty years apart. What? And that's unbelievable. <gasps> like the amount oh. of progress that was made between those oh two my events God. is just enormous. Wow. I think that, it can feel and, like longer because part of the progress was in the ability to film and f- photograph things in a realistic way. Wow. But really good point. Good yeah. Lord. Like, you know, I, I can't even believe we fly. I still can't believe that that's I, a thing. Susie, every single time. Yes. I feel like I like, I'm looking around to like connect eyes on the plane with somebody else <laughs> who also is like, right. yeah, this is fucking crazy. Can you believe crazy, we're up right? here? Like, can you believe this? Yeah, I it and and listen, I understand. Yeah, lift, drag. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we get uh, the mechanics. I, got, of I it. totally get the mechanics. <laughs> it just uh, like I look around sometimes and I'm like, we wear clothes. Yeah, like it's like that. Where like mm-hmm. I see my, I'm like in nature. I'm taking my dog for a walk. My mom's here, so we got like the other dog too. And like she's like a Costa Rican dog who like wants to just be wild and everything. And I'm like <laughs> just looking at all these animals, and I'm like looking at us like holding this dog on a leash, and I'm looking at like shoes, shoes, and I'm not stoned. No, I'm yes, just but that's, like I love that. Sober as a judge, and like I'm like. This is crazy. Yes. How did this happen? How did, like, I mean, and I get how. I get it. But, no, but it's that's, just like. That's the spirit I want to excite in people and I want to inspire in people because, like, th- you will never be bored if you really think about what the hell is going on every day. It's right. It's insane. <laughs> insane. It doesn't make and you know who we should ask about all of this, who probably could figure it out, is the little girl, uh, Kashi Quest, I think her name is, who just, uh, freaking two years old, and just got inducted into Mensa because she has the highest IQ. God damn it. I always hate two those years old. prodigies. Two years old? These fucking assholes. I'm so glad it's a little up. girl. <laughs> fucking assholes. Like, no, she's like, that's amazing. about the little girl. Can you believe it? She's 46 What's points What's she doing? Like above. curing cancer or something? Probably at five, she's going to give her like. I read a, 
Great my first MRI. A long time ago about how shitty it is when you're a prodigy and then you grow I'm up sure. and like you're not anymore. Well, well I mean, like I a didn't lot of experience people know this, this on a happens. full scale, but I think I experienced a little bit of this. Really? Like you peaked too yes. early? A hundred percent. Because my mom says, Mike, my biggest problem right now is that everything came so easy to me when I was little that now yeah. I have to actually like try and mm-hmm. like that That's is That's what hard. I'm saying. Yes. And like, I mean... I never opened a book. Like, I'm. this is not Sarah, like, being braggy here. Like, I'm like that character from Royal Tenenbaums, where it's like, she's, like, super smart, and then I just, like, peaked, and then everybody else caught up to me. But, right, and then, that like, grad is what school, the I had to learn said. how to study. I was like, holy fuck, I don't know how to study. I don't know how to, re- yeah. I don't know how to do this. I had no study skills in grad school. I had to learn them all by, you know, on my own. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, everybody else around me was just as good. Yeah. You know, and this then is my why, like best friend has a PhD and I'm like, oh, okay, no, well, <laughs> this is why dummy over here. I feel very thankful that I was always average because, and that's why I say my son's average and that's fine because yeah. it teaches you how to accomplish things without being extraordinary like you. Here's the thing, too. It's only stuff that that translates. Well, first of all, thank you, and not really. And, but I think we're all extraordinary in our own ways, for sure. True. And mine is just in a measurable in a in a way yeah. that's measurable and um, that society uh, values. Uh, yes, yeah. that's it. Because my mom could absolutely tell you what create what made this like. That she, yeah, right. she she'll be I like, like oh, I, I did that. Yeah, I know how to do that. Like it's like you just, like, I mean, she she basically uh, made you do everything. Stimulated my memory in a crazy way when I like, and then when I read that book, uh, what happened to you, and learned that oh, what is it? Uh, a a baby until two years old is creating, I believe it's twenty thousand or sixty thousand. Uh, neurons every two seconds. Wow. Yeah. I'm sure I have that passage highlighted on our next commercial break. I'll find yeah, some of the quote. Some of the things in that book like freaked me out for that reason. Freaked me out. And then they say as an adult, we only create 700 on a good <laughs> yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, holy You kept talking fuck. about that. I was like, <laughs> so... So you're learning everything at this. Cra- it's like the stuff that you can learn, and the way that your brain is like function. Like so, just go crazy. This is why early childhood education is so important. You know what? I'm linking this back to our first com- part of the conversation when you said who should teach this. We need pro. We need to be like also supporting early childhood education from like day one. Yeah, and early childhood hugs and love and affection. Uh- that yeah. is part of the education. Yeah. Education on like, oh, yeah. On being a person oh, and love. Being a person. Right? Yeah. And it sounds like the, the mom and dad of this little girl are doing a really good job with that because they're, they're in education or mom's in education. And she said, she was like, I just noticed she started memorizing a lot of things. And so I just kept on putting stuff in front of her to... You know, started to like keep her stimulated, and they yeah. couldn't find a preschool that could really keep up with her. So, mom just started um, a preschool and now has 12 students there. Well, and so that also bums me out about how that's so great for the child, but it's so lucky that she happened to have mm-hmm. a parent that could do that. And right. a lot of like the excellent Ugh. kids around the world who are underprivileged, right. they just, you know, get a normal right. life. Yeah. Can't because it's not like potential. the, the uh, uh, what is the word, D- dis- dispersion of the IQ, like how IQ mm-hmm. is dispersed amongst the population. There's mm-hmm. some fancy word for that. I can't remember. Um, it's not like, oh, we just save it for like the, you know, wealthy white families in the United States. No. It's everybody, like... I feel like it's an equal, like you're going to have the same amount of people with a a IQ over, you know, 120 everywhere, Mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yes. That's how it goes. Mm -hmm. Equal distribution. That's it. Equal distribution of IQs across the globe. So for sure. But even like the testing of IQ is biased towards white, you know, Western blah, blah, blah. So like it's hard to even measure that. But yes, logic tells us. That. Yes, logic for sure. 
Yeah. Right. And as soon as we like, oh, absolutely, it's totally like that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I fell for a, uh, you know, while reading the article, it was like, you know, that one of those like test your IQ links. Yeah. And so I clicked it and then I spent 20 minutes doing the IQ test. And then they were like, for five ninety nine, you can know your results. I was like, God damn it. No. I'll tell you what, my IQ is high enough to know I ain't falling for that shit. <laughs> So I don't know what mine is, but I feel confident in my my answers. Yeah, I have no doubts. Thanks, Sus. You could save yourself twenty minutes. I do feel like it's the exact same as any one of. It's like I average as fuck now. (laughs) I'm average, average intelligence, normal, totally. The only thing is, I I have that love for learning that makes it so you want to keep learning things and it keeps it going. That's it. And Mm -hmm. everybody listening has that too. Yes, that's what I love about our brainiacs. I love them. It's the best. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I had a little burp. Oh, excuse me. Let tickle. it out, you know? You know, I got to. <laughs> okay, so good news, bad news. You know, we got elevator shafts. That's bad. <laughs> and, uh, you know, little girls who are really smart. Uh, that's good. I'm, uh, but this one, I don't know, maybe falls a little bit on the in-between. I watched a – I binge-watched this like a crazy person, mm-hmm. um, like like six hours in a row, Seuss. Okay. Uh, I'm not proud of it. Um, uh, there's a new season. Do you ever see that uh, podcast or hear that podcast, Dirty John? Oh, yeah. I've heard of it. Yeah, it's so good. And mm-hmm. it took place in Newport Beach, like the real crime. So it's there. It's It was a podcast that was uh, about a murder that took place. And it's like a true crime story. And it's like, you know, a lover scorned kind of thing. Mm. And... Uh, well, well, sort of. Um, but the they did a second – so they did a TV show about it that was so good and they came out with a second season. And it is, uh, you know, same series but a different true crime story and it's called the Betty Broderick story. Mm-hmm. Do you know who Betty Broderick is? No. Does this – okay. So this was – she was on – there. Uh, they were on Oprah. The family was on Oprah. Yeah, it this, rings a bell. This became like a big famous thing. It was one of the most public divorces. Oh, was she divorces. a multiple personality? No. No, she was a woman – it was a family that uh, – her husband and wife that um, uh, lived in San Diego and had one of the most brutal divorces in history. Oh, yeah. And yes. it resulted with a double homicide mm-hmm. where the wife murders – Killed the husband and yes. his new woman. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I get goosebumps. Oh! Mm-hmm. But, oh, man – it's good. The whole story, like, he he was totally gaslighting her. It's kind of like a whose side are you really on thing. Right. So she, she, the first time this goes, and this is also before, I believe it's, I don't know. I, I can't even say this correctly because I still have one episode left. But I believe it's before laws about, um, like, uh, battered woman syndrome yeah. kind of thing. Well, was he like, beating her up? He wasn't beating her up, but there was definite psychological manipulation happening. Like, yeah, because she was you a uh, stay-at-home mom. Yeah, yeah, and he. But and before um, they, well, when they first got married, so he went. He started in med school, mm-hmm. and he met her when she was seventeen years old. They got married, right? Um, and she, and then like, you know, had a baby right away. And the whole time she's working to put him through med school yep. and is like this devoted wife and is like uh, transcribing all of the, uh, uh, you know, all of his notes and all that. And yeah. then um, after med school, he, he decides that he wants to go to law school and wants to go to Harvard. And so she supports him through that. And she's like, now has like two or three kids and is like home taking care of and working all these jobs. And then he, um, you know, passes the bar and becomes a lawyer that specializes in malpractice uh, lawsuits. So, and he's like the only MD who does this. So he like Mm -hmm. gets a ton of money, becomes super wealthy, like owns his own law firm, all this stuff. And he becomes... He uses every single bit of knowledge that he has. It almost seems like he plan like before he even 
says, I want to get a divorce or starts the motions of it, he was starting the process and learning what he had to do to get the most money, to uh, uh, basically bleed her dry. It's just really you see one of those situations where he holds a lot of the power, especially financially, Mm -hmm. and that everything get the rug ripped right out from under her. And as we're watching it, I'm watching it with my mom, and she's like, oh, my gosh, dumb lady. Like, I can't believe you're this. I'm like, mom. I would do that. Like this, mm-hmm. I, this, I get, I felt like that when I got divorced. Mm-hmm. This is what, if I, I know that feeling of like, I want it almost like, you know, and she, her lawyer was like, you need to return my phone calls. And I was like, I know the feeling of one, not wanting to answer that phone call. Cause like, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, but it is really good. And it is, I'm I'm kind of I mean I don't think you should murder your husband for <laughs> sure I think what she did was wrong absolutely mm-hmm. and but I uh, you understand the impulse I un, I think somebody should have that oh man he just so when when so much of your identity is being a mom and being in and and he just took everything away and like what does somebody do and right and it's then just he met really this new lady. And basically, oh she was more of like what a doctor's lawyer's wife would be, right? She was the receptionist at the law firm he worked for. And then with no experience, nothing whatsoever, he hires her. And she like can't type. She doesn't have a, a <laughs> law type. degree. Well, that they make that like a point of yeah, like, the, yeah. you know. Unqualified. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, totally unqualified. Like they have her typing like the quick brown fox like jumps oh over whatever. God. And like she like, can't do it. <clears throat> and then finally learned. Uh, uh, you know, real, real like, uh, you know, Rex to Richard. Uh, <laughs> uh, then uh, so she gets hired as the paralegal and he hires her as his like assistant and paralegal for like the equivalent of an $85,000 a year job that she has like mm. no qualifications for. Meanwhile, uh, his wife is at home, like with the kids, like not able, like make, able right. to make any money. Yeah, and you know he's like, and then he was just gaslighting her the whole time, telling her that she's crazy and he's not in this relationship. And the relationship that he had went on for like five years, and then they end up getting married the same month that the divorce was finalized. Then he gets married in like the same church or like the the same kind of church with like the same outfit that for their wedding and then goes to the same place for a honeymoon. Oh my God. I mean, uh, and then the girlfriend records the answering machine on the phone and it's like, like originally she had she had like she's kind of in a way kind of taunting her too Mm -hmm. like she re-recorded before they were even married the girlfriend at the time girlfriend re-records the the outgoing message on the um husband's answering machine at their home because this is like 1985 too when this is happening and uh the answering message said like you've reached the broderick family and she's the fucking girlfriend who's saying it so every time that the mom calls she hears that and it just sends her yeah. into a like a frantic and he won't answer any phone calls. He won't like, um, you know, uh, and he's like changing things with the court about like uh, visitation and, you know, she's supposed to have Easter and then he like files something that says like he can – she doesn't get that now but she never hears about that because that, you know, he knows all of the ins yeah. and outs of the court systems and all this stuff. He even made it – so every time she calls his house and uh, leaves a message and uses any kind of profanity, he finds her $150 out of the spousal support check, and somehow that was okay. Wow. So at the end of it, she ended up owing him $750,000. Oh, my God. I remember what? the kids were on Oprah. Oh, my God, the poor kids. Well, like it they just were adults like- at that by that point but like yeah were they in the series the not the real ones that the actor oh, like kids like people re- playing yeah it's a and and the actors are great it's amanda peet who plays her and charlie sheen or not charlie sheen um uh oh, christian slater who mm. plays him and mm. they're perfect for it and he's so slimy and like like the first few episodes you're like i don't even know who the bad guy is yeah and I love things like that. But the fact that it's like real and 
it was just the messiest divorce in history. And you just I really feel like, you know, she got screwed by somebody who knew the system so well. Yeah. And then when she was in jail, because uh, uh, she ended up getting a life sentence, at, or like 32 years, I think. And um, uh, she got letters like crazy of people who were like, fully in support like this mm-hmm. happened to me mm-hmm. this is you know i got you, the system was used against me like i mean i even felt that a little bit mm-hmm. you know of like just yep. somebody who could of like you know i'm gonna do this just because i can yeah and it's like dude that is oh my god it's just fighting a a, a tough battle for so you'd recommend the series oh yeah it was mm-hmm. really i mean didn't watch six episodes in a row for nothing. <laughs> Still have one to go, and I'm like dying. It's gonna be so good. Oh my god! After yeah. six hours, you're like, I'm gonna save the last one. No, I fell asleep because oh, you know, okay. at two o'clock in the morning, I can only keep my eyes open for so long. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, I have no idea what happened. It's literally the last episode. I, I stayed awake as long as I could because I'm like, I gotta know. Mm. And I bit off an entire fingernail. <sighs> Man, so upset Sarah. About it. I know. I always keep it to just one because I'm like, I can't bite any of those. And so, like, like I'm like, okay, I've got my. It's terrible. I really should just. Was like, it in the um, the what happened to you book? <coughs> Excuse me. Was it in the what happened to you book where it mentions that? Um, nail biting is common among sexual abuse yes. survivors. Did it? Okay. Uh, I thought of yeah. you when I read and that. And like the little bit of, and like understanding why, that it's just like a little hit of of like yes, oxytocin that's right. mm-hmm. or like that good. And it's like that just picking, does, for just a little bit, it feels like it, and you become addicted to that. Yeah. That book tied with the habits book. Yeah, I know. Which, by the way, we have an interview on Patreon that's so good, and you should so definitely check good. it out. Um, it, it just feels like I have like a deeper understanding for how the brain works, and I feel like once you have an understanding for how the machine works, you can operate it to its fullest potential. Like you can re, you know, you can make it work for you. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of us are just running things on autopilot. Yes. Because that's how we how we feel like it is. And then we have to realize like, oh, wait a sec. Like, I'm not my thoughts. Yeah. F- feelings are just feelings. I am in control of this. Oh, wait. I can I can determine how I feel. And mm-hmm. also, I don't have to care about how that uh, that other person feels. Yeah. That's a big one. So, I mean, you care, of course, but like you're not responsible for another person's feelings. So true, Sarah. That's a hard one. You want to wind it? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wind it down. It's like the opposite of wind it up. You know that song? Wind it up. No. Mm, mm, mm. You never know the songs Wait, but I what say is on here. It? Oh, and is it new? It, it, no, it's... Oh, my God. I was thinking of something. You definitely know what it is. Oh, my God. I can't remember. But, you Sing know, we're it. winding it down. So that's the only part I remember. Do, 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 wind it up. Do, 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 wind it up. That, like, that gives you nothing. Like, what is that even? And I got... Let me type in wind it up. Wind it up. Song. Um, um, okay, are we ready for this? It, oh, Gwen Stefani. What? Yeah. It's about to wind it up. Uh, 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 wind it up. Uh, wow. Uh, uh, wind it up. Okay. I don't know it. Yes. Yes. That, it's like start with that, like with yo lay, yo lay, yo. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Are you uh, listening uh, uh, to it? Yeah. D- can you hear that? No. Oh, well, that sound, I thought I was playing it. Well, we'll see in the, uh, in the thing if I was playing a little bit of it. So it sounded really weird then if you were just sitting there in silence for a minute. Yeah, I was like, like, oh, don't really you hear what's thinking going on? Hard. Oh, no, I was, I was playing Wind It Up. So that's either going to uh, be in there or just be a weird moment of silence as we wind it down. <laughs> Today we found out Sarah has a lot of inventions in the pipeline. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, so, you know, I am using my brain to think and know a whole bunch of stuff, uh, but the people in the UK don't know about how many holes you have. And right. I imagine that they the people may have in called the United it a States don't do much. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Susie with the jokes. Oh, that is so funny. Um, we got terrified of elevators. Yeah, but amazed oh. by flight. I mean, we really had a moment of wonder. Yeah, and you know what? Isn't that what it's all about? Yes. And 
And maybe if we just embrace more of those moments of wonder, we too can I mean, like, I don't what, know, open up our brain and end up in This is what Fred Rogers said. Isn't it marvelous to marvel? Isn't it oh. wonderful to wonder? Yes, it is. It, and it's it, awesome to awe. It goes pitter patter for that. <laughs> I love that. Mm-hmm. You gotta just keep in that the same way you. my heart went pitter patter for the biggest little farm. Yes. And all the bees. Oh, it's so good. And, and I can't wait to update you guys on what their stone fruit varietals taste like. Yes. I can't wait till you go and get their produce. This is very exciting. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I want to encourage everyone to check out our book club and also yes. the documentary club. Um, sign yes. up for our newsletter. Check out our Patreon for bonus content. Patreon.com slash brain candy. Subscribe, tell a I friend. I can't wait till this month's book club. I can't wait to talk about trees with all of our book club people. I feel like people. that every month. Like, okay, we have so much to talk about. And my heart just feels so full afterwards. Yes, oh, shout out to our book club peeps. Shout out. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.